If you needed any more evidence that a deep state group of thugs is running the United States government into the ground, then look no further than the major developments we've seen over the past 24 hours in Washington, D.C. Ambulances racing to the White House, roads blocked off. They won't tell us what's going on. It's America's house, but did Biden have another stroke? Who's actually running the country? We have no idea. They won't tell us. Tulsi Gabbard calls Kamala Harris a deep state communist that's controlled by the military industrial complex. Foreign policy decisions are being made by unelected people in the military industrial complex who are profiting from us being in a constant state of war. Kamala Harris does not have the strength to stand up to the military industrial complex. And then the next day, Gabbard is placed on the terror watch list. What happened to Tulsi, Tulsi Gabbard, Gabbard this yeah. week? It was just extraordinary. And I don't see why there is not more outrage and indignation from every corner of our country. And you think that, that you think that came from the White House to spy it, it on was, Tulsi it, Gabbard? It was yeah. it clearly came from the White yeah. House and it came the day after she criticized President Biden. She was put on a list called the Quiet Eyes list. Yes, Tulsi Gabbard, who served her nation with honor and distinction, is placed on a terrorist watch list because she dared to criticize the head of the deep state, Kamala Harris. It's quite honestly shocking, and we need to clean house of all of these deep state thugs right now in this next election. So we've got a few big news stories today to get to that the mainstream media, of course, is absolutely ignoring. So let's start with the assassination attempt on President Trump's life. Over the past few hours, we've got some damning new evidence of the deep state cabal that's trying to kill Trump. Put aside for a minute the damning new evidence that Rothschild, BlackRock, Vanguard, Bush, Cheney, both of them stood to gain between $700 billion and $1 trillion in profits if Trump was killed. One quarter of this portfolio shorted Donald J. Trump's stock the day before the assassination attempt. Put that aside, though, for now, okay? The new body cam footage just released this week shows the Secret Service was lying just about everything on that day. First, the Secret Service claims the first cop who climbed the roof to confront the shooter cut his hand and was injured and therefore had to backtrack. But now we know that's a total lie, thanks to new body cam footage that was just released. There was blood found in a sink in the single-story building, and now we know it was not the cop's blood. So whose blood was it exactly? Whose blood was in that sink inside of the building when Thomas Matthew Crooks was shot killed on the top of the building? I hope they tell us. But what you're about to hear will actually make your blood boil, and it's making Senator Grassley's blood boil as well. Newly released body cam footage from the local Butler law enforcement shows that local police told the Secret Service to secure the building from which gunman Thomas Matthew Crooks later fired his shots days before the rally. I told them they need to post the guy over here. I told them that the, the Secret Service. I told them that Tuesday. I told them to post guys over here. I have no contact with you. What? I thought you got one No. We're inside. Alpha one, Bravo one. Thank you. I told them to post guys over here. I wasn't even concerned about it because I thought someone was on the roof. I thought that's how we, how, like, how the hell can you lose a guy walking back here? They were, they were, on the roof. they were inside. In other words, this officer had already warned the Secret Service to secure the shooter's building days before. Senator Grassley isn't holding back. He's demanding answers from the Secret Service. He wrote a scathing letter. Grassley asked acting director Ronald Rowe about his knowledge of the meeting and the officer's warnings before his congressional testimony on July 30th. Do you remember that congressional testimony where it got heated? Did he lie right to Congress's face during this testimony to hide this crucial piece of information? Now, Butler police told you to secure this building, but you intentionally left it unguarded. Yes, on purpose. Why? Why was it left unguarded on purpose? I hope we see those documents. Grassley isn't stopping there. He says there is a conspiracy to kill President Trump, and he's citing the newly arrested Pakistani man, Asif Merchant. Now, he was arrested this week for allegedly trying to hire assassins to kill Trump, finish off the job that they had started. Senator Grassley says there is a conspiracy to assassinate President Trump, a sitting senator a high-ranking sitting senator saying there's a conspiracy to kill Trump. Grassley wants to know how a man with a terrorist background moved freely right into this country. Who let him in? I have an idea. 
Folks, this isn't a simple case of a lone wolf gone rogue. This is a deep state conspiracy to take out Trump. Make no mistake about it. If you needed any more evidence that the deep state military industrial complex is running the show, look what just happened in Ukraine overnight. The Pentagon now giving the green light to Ukraine to openly attack inside of Russia using US weapons. Um, can you provide us an update on Ukraine's incursion into Kursk? Well, firstly, uh, yeah, is that consistent with the United States' uh, sort of understanding of what Ukraine can and cannot do with U.S. weapons? Uh, thanks for the question. So, yes, it is. It is consistent with our policy. Um, and we have supported Ukraine from the very beginning to defend themselves against um, attacks that are coming across the border and for the need for crossfires. Um, so they are taking actions to protect themselves from attacks that are coming from a region that are within the U.S. policy of where they can operate, um, you know, our weapons, our systems, our capabilities. What? Now that Biden is officially brain dead, the deep state is now crossing right over Putin's red line and attacking Russia. Who is in charge in the White House? Who is it? It's not Biden. So can they tell us who's running the show? What the hell are Americans doing supporting a neo-Nazi government in Ukraine, the most corrupt government in Europe, attacking Russian forces inside of Russia? Did you sign up for this? I sure as hell didn't. And NATO is now attacking Belarus as well. They are now on high alert. The air defense forces of the Belarus Air Force were put on high alert. The point is that we suspect that this is not the first time that the armed forces of Ukraine have violated all sorts of agreements, violated all sorts of rules of behavior, and violated the airspace of the Republic of Belarus. Shit is about to hit the fan, guys, and the American public deserves answers. Did Biden, as commander-in-chief, order these attacks, violating his own red lines? If not, then who is doing it? Is Kamala Harris now in charge? We have to stay woke. Like, everybody needs to be woke. <laughs> really, truly makes me sad as to what's happened to this country, and we need to fight back.